Alex Car Doctor, welcome back. Back with another Cadillac Escalade video. Uh, this one has a special story to it. Uh, this is not the same Cadillac that was in my shop last time. If I'm gonna put a link in the description how I diagnosed that one. Uh, this customer actually came from that video. This is one of my YouTube customers, so shout out to him uh, for bringing his car in and letting me take good care of him. Um, now, the special story, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna get into it later. It's really messed up in my opinion. It's a lot of goodies and shady stuff. <laughs> but this is what I've done so far. As you see, I got the engine partially torn down for diagnostic purposes. Um, I don't think I mentioned, did I mention what year this was? A 2016. Yeah. 2016. The last one was a 2015. Same thing, nothing special. On this particular engine, the lifters completely fell apart. I actually seen this guy a couple of weeks ago when it was ticking. When he brought it back to me this time, it was not ticking. It just had a really bad skip to it. Um, the, this was the bad lifter. This is exactly how I found it. And this is what it's supposed to look like. As you see, this big chunk missing on the side. It's very nasty looking. So of course, it chewed up the cam and in the process, it messed up the cylinder, uh, not the cylinder walls, but the lifter walls. These, these lifters go down in a cylinder and they go up and down and it's a light thin of oil that's coating the side wall so it won't be metal to metal contact. But when something catastrophic happens like that, you're gonna chew up stuff. So over here, I don't know if you can catch it on camera. Let's try to zoom in. Yes, you see all that scratching um, on the side wall, let me see, can I get something to point with? Just to make sure people, we're on the same page. So, that's scratching right there. And when, yeah, okay, yeah, it's really bad on that side. So, directly right here, what I'm pointing at is the cam. It's all, oh yeah, you can the light. It's all scuffed up. Are oh, you doing a bad light I job? I am doing it. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, it's all scuffed up. So the cam gonna have to be replaced um, along with all new lifters, head gas. Oh, I'm just gonna redo the whole engine. Now, the only reason we're doing it like this instead of replacing the whole engine, a lot of people are still paying on these trucks. I don't know everybody business, uh, but these engines are heck of expensive. This is the 6.2 LT motor. It's no longer an LS. It's the LT. And I've seen them used for upward of nine grand. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but nine grand for a big hunk of aluminum is a little bit steep. And that's used. Yeah, that's and you used. still got to upgrade the lifters <laughs> or you'll be right back in the same situation. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm shocked by the price. I think the lowest I've seen, because I handle the big ticket mm -hmm. items like this, is uh, I think I got quoted for six grand. Still, that's yeah. still a lot. You're talking about Mercedes Benz engines at, at that point. Right. These are the tools I'm gonna be using, jumping into my tools. Uh, like always, my little Milwaukee Stubby 3 8 impact. I'm not gonna be using that, that's just up there. Uh, my favorite socket set of all time. Uh, some snap arm wrenches, some, you know, gear, ratchet wrenches, uh, a ratchet wrench, and I think, oh, now on the head bolts, one head bolt is an oddball, and this is a half inch um, Allen head, uh, yeah, Allen head uh, socket, so I'm going to show you that in a little bit, but let's grab our wrenches and let's roll. Jumping right into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this side is take off the manifold. Uh, quick notation, if you're attempting this job at home, on the front here is the crank pulley. It is very hard to remove the crank pulley. Um, what I had to do is heat it up and hit it with a strong half inch impact gun. Uh, still, after that it's still pressed on, so you're gonna have to get a pulley tool to pull it off. So it's, I don't know why GM did that. But while I'm tearing it down, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I'm tearing it down. Um, I'll get into that now. Um, we're gonna actually send this head 
the block, not the head. I'm gonna actually send the block off to the machine shop and have them fix that scored up uh, lifter cylinder. That's what I call it. And guys, if I'm calling it the wrong thing, you know, write down in the comments like always. I don't mind corrections. No one's perfect. All right, so. so the customer is actually going to pick this up and send it off. We're having a customer do it because we normally don't like to deal with third parties. Like if that it. company screws up his block or whatever, um, then if we sent that off, then the customer's gonna be looking at us. Yeah. You don't care about whether the third party did it or not, which is why we don't do head gaskets uh, for the public, even though Alex is the head gasket yeah. man. I'm the bomb at it. It's just, <laughs> I don't like third parties. Right. Been screwed over too many times. Yep. Just business. Also gonna be well. I might as well jump right into it. Now, the most important thing about keeping these engines alive, um, maintain your oil. Use the proper oil. It tells you right here on the oil cap. Zero W zero W twenty. Do not put five W thirty or anything else in these trucks. I think. The reason I see so many is because a lot of people take their place, their trucks and cars to these quick lube places. Some of these quick lube places, they don't care. They're just going to use whatever they have on hand, most likely 5W30. And over time, that will mess up stuff. So in my opinion, people are using the wrong oil with these engines. Now, quick question. Back when you worked for a quick lube place back in the way back in the day, is that what y'all did? Like, yep. that was protocol? And that's why I quit. <laughs> <laughs> back in the day, when I didn't like something, uh, I, I didn't stick around. Uh, these quick lube places and some of these shops are very shady. They tell the mechanics to do stuff, and if you don't do it, well, guess what? You out the door. And... Before I did anything I didn't want to do, I just straight up quit. Now, like always, it's okay to take stuff down with an impact gun, but when you're going back together, never tighten anything up with an impact gun or any kind of electric ratchet tool or anything like that. It's just not recommended. Now that I mentioned that, the story, like I promised you guys, um, where did Harry put the lifters? Or, oh, on the other side, there we go. Now, these doesn't matter. These don't have any type of order. Um, they go in, so if you see me just throwing them in here any kind of way, they're all the same. Those are called? These are push rods. Okay. And so that's for my own knowledge. Okay. <laughs> I actually need to check the push rod on the other side to make sure it's not bent from that bad lifter. So I'm going to keep these separated for the time being. And when I come back to it later on, I'm going to check the, the push rods for the other sides. I'm going to put these right here. Now, before I take the head off, I love working on these particular engines. These are overhead valve engines. Um, they're much more compact and smaller in design. Uh, the other style is the overhead cam, meaning the cam is at the top. The cam on this particular engine is directly in the middle of the motor, the engine block. So it's approximately right behind this cover which I'm going to show you pulling it out in a little bit. Uh, any other engine, I have a quick example. Just for guys that don't know at home, this is actually going to be my table for my lobby. I'm getting ready to make this out of a table. So I'm going to put a glass top and put it in my lobby. And it's going to be a nice little 
engine display table thing. But you guys don't know, this is a cam. Um, you have a exhaust cam and an intake cam. But on those type of engines, the whole cam is the intake and the exhaust. Each load indicates whether it's the intake or exhaust. So, I need to get my 17 and bust this to loose. This is the high pressure fuel line. Because this is a direct injected engine. That's what set it apart from the regular LT motor. Oh, I'm about to get a pole. <laughs> I'm not about to strain myself. All right, got my pole for more leverage. Struggle. I'm gonna stand over here yeah. so I won't be in the way. You're removing the hair bolts. All right. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you should take them apart in the water. I never done that. To me, it don't really matter. Now, if you want to, you can take them in apart in the order with how you tighten them. I never found a need to do so. Now, we're going back on. Please get new head bolts. Head bolts will stretch over time. If you go back in with the old ones, you may run into some problems. Now, be also a good idea to remove your spark plugs so you won't damage them if you've never done this before. But I'm not so worried about that because I do these all the time and I'm not worried about it. Me out of, got me out of breath. <laughs> I told you to hit the jam. <laughs> yeah, I'll find the time. We ain't no spring chicken no more. I still try to be. <laughs> we got enough kids to eat. Yeah. <laughs> now, getting into the story behind this engine, um, this customer recently got his truck back from another shop maybe about three to four months ago. They supposedly <clears throat> did this already. The guy claimed he replaced all the lifters except two. <laughs> I think it's a load of BS. I only think he removed this side right here. And I'm about to show you why I think that once I get this head pulled off. So he didn't even do the other side. The other side, that's the side that fell apart. But why would he do all except two? Maybe it's the DOD lifters he didn't do, supposedly, maybe? No, it's DOD lifters on both sides. <laughs> so, so maybe those are, how many DOD lifters? Right? Um, You have four DOD um I soldiers. thought it was maybe two. Maybe he did all no. the regular ones and didn't do it. Um, I, I forget, but I think, no, I didn't forget. Uh, you have four cylinders that will shut off for each cylinder you have two dod lifters that will deactivate and stop opening up the um, valves and the fuel will shut off for that particular cylinder as well um so the what that's eight mm -hmm. the math served me correctly mm -hmm. yeah two for yeah okay <laughs> all right so now i'm just 
pull this head up. Oh, I'm getting peed on. <laughs> okay. You always say that. Up the other hair gasket to compare. Um, it appears they look about the same. It looked like he used the same hair gasket, which is a no no. <laughs> yeah, big no no. And it looked like he sprayed it with some type of stuff because, as you can see, it's a little ashy. That's not factory, um, that's some kind of copper spray or aluminum copper aluminum spray or something that you spray on the head gaskets to seal them. I don't know but this is a big mystery if he replace he supposedly replaced the lifters why did the lifter fell apart like that and get this he charged him twenty eight hundred dollars to do you know to replace that stuff so it's just a straight up rip off in my opinion but it was still skipping when they gave it back to oh, him. Oh, yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. That's the dirty That's part. a telltale. Uh, so the customer, when we picked up this truck, yeah, he's like, you know, why is it still uh, ticking? It was ticking, not uh -huh. skipping yet. Tipping, ticking. So he was like, uh, oh, you just need to change the oil and drive it. No. You don't charge nobody that much money. You could have changed the oil for twenty eight hundred dollars. Yeah, all was, that money that come included. This is ridiculous. So, looking at these lifters, it's really hard to say if he replaced them or not. So, this is one of the DOD lifters. As you can see, the difference for the guys that don't know. This is a regular lifter. This is a DOD lifter or active fuel management lifter. I don't think he replaced it. To be honest, I don't know what that dude did. Oh, it's, I guess it would remain a mystery. But only he knows. <laughs> yeah. If I went in and did this job, first of all, these lifter keepers, they must be replaced because this is old plastic. What the lifter keepers does, the job is to stop the lifters from twisting. So the lifters will go down in a groove and you know, they'll, they kind of, you know, stationary. If these plastic ears break, the lifter will twist going sideways, destroying the cam because the lifter is designed to roll like this, not sideways, so very important that you replace key components of this engine when you go in and you know so-called replacing stuff i don't see why go this far in anyway and not replace this all stuff. of them all right yeah. it's just silly to me. so all right so remove the rest of them so they should just easily slide out like this. But looking at these, the wear pattern, let me get a rag real quick. Look at the wear uh, on these. He said like some is very lighted and uh, there's this dark area. It looks like this lifter been in here since factory. So it's no way it should be looking like How long this. ago did he supposedly have all this like stuff? Three, four months ago. Yeah, like this lifter is, it hasn't been replaced, you know. Guys, you know, what do you guys think? Yeah, <laughs> write down in the comments yeah, I've, your opinion. I've tried to. All the GM techs out there yeah. that, that's watching, what do y'all think? He probably replaced two lifters. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that, these. Or he probably went in and replaced the DOD lifters. I don't know. They're the only ones that look kind of fresh. Alright. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is start removing the front area after I get a rag and dry my hands. Alright, 
So the next thing coming off is the water pump, followed by the valley um, pan. Um, my buddy just told me what this particular piece is called. It's called something I just forgot. Ask the GM text in the comments. Yeah, let, let me know what it what it's called. Um, I do know it controls the DOD lifters. So let me get spray around here. Start moving the water pump. Yeah, so guys at home, be careful what, you know, where you take your car to. It really matters. Who you let touch your car. Because I don't want that to end up like you. And of course, he's he tried to reach back out to him. He's not answering the phone or nothing. That's the water pump? Yep. Oh, wow. It's huge. I never seen one that big. <laughs> wow. It's front cover time. Now going back together, of course, I'm going to torque everything back down. And by the way, if you want to see me do this job from start to finish one day, uh, what you think? Give this vehicle, I mean, give this video about a thousand likes and next truck come in like this, I will show you start. Because there finish. will be more. Yeah, it will be more. This is a it's very common too. issue. So, yeah, what you think? That's about fair, huh? Yeah, a thousand likes. Yes, give me a thousand likes on this video, and next one come in just like it, I will make sure I do it start to finish. It's gonna be long. <laughs> it's not gonna be short. Ah, uh, they don't mind. Yeah, they don't mind. I have to get a real little pry bar. So, this front cover, after you've gotten everything loose on it, um, should just be these outer bolts and these, uh, yeah, should be two in the front. Hold it in. And that should be it. Now, they have these little pry points that you can pry on. And you just want to make sure you very easily prying on this because this is aluminum it will break and you have this sensor right here let me come on the other side and see yeah. now, now i'm gonna have to drop the pan too but i'm gonna unplug it in there from a little from beneath that's how that's how i think it comes unplugged from what i can remember Because in theory, now I've, I've spoke with one of my GM friends. <laughs> he said he can install this uh, timing chain and everything with, without dropping the pan. I tried it. I didn't have such good luck, but I'm, I'm overdoing a step here. I'm gonna have to drop the pan, then take the front cover off. So let me flip the engine around. That's how you properly and easily get the, what I'm trying to say, get the cam out. So before I turn the engine, I'm gonna make sure nothing is on top. Make sure I have all my lifters out, which I did. Hopefully, the main goal here, too, is to get all the pieces out of the 
out of this engine. So. NASCAR, NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they make me think of. Yeah, they're fast. Right. In the way. And you have some tins up here. Okay, somebody's crying. That is diesel. Okay. She's probably looking for turbo. Probably. I didn't get no black smudge on my face, did I? No. Okay, I <laughs> wiped my face and I was like, uh oh. <laughs> You're fine. Okay. So, I'm trying to organize my boats. Some orderly fashion. I'm gonna be a bad guy. All right, same process. I'm gonna very gently lift up on this stuff because you are dealing with aluminum, and it will break. Yeah, we don't want that. Got some pieces of lifter. Uh huh. Oh wow. I lost. Uh, I'm about to take this shield off. Mm -hmm. So, as promised, it's underneath here. Like always, GM have these little locking pins that you have to kind of slide out. And now I can completely remove my front cover. do next is remove this um, me my mind is slipping today because I know what this part is called <laughs> it's like this one you know yeah <laughs> but I'm not gonna be able to think that. normally when I get into <clears throat> taking apart mode I just zone out a little bit and don't really think But help me out, guys. A windage, windage tray. I don't know. Let me stop. If I hurt myself. Thank you. <laughs> There's a piece of the lifter right here. This is the roller part. Now it's supposed to have some needle bearings all through here too. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the pickup tube. And I'm going to take this over to the parts washer and clean it off camera, but I'll just let you guys know what I'm going to do. I always want to check these screens. Um, anytime you have pieces falling apart in the engine, because if you don't, you can get things like um, plastic guide, um, plastic guides caught up in the screen, causing low oil flow. Uh, needle bearings can go get thrown up through here. Uh, so I'm gonna clean that too. Just gonna secure my bolts. All right. So the rest of them must be where the cam is. Because I don't see anything out right here. Oh yeah, all the needle bearings, look at all that. Some needle bearings, it's just so muddy looking. Hopefully. Focus on it, come back. Okay, let me get some more. <laughs> this is bad. It's number all metal chunk. Ah, it's so dirty. This, this is ridiculous. There, needle bearing right there. So everything did go to the bottom. Mm. Wow. This is crazy. That needle bearing. All right, that was messy. 
Why don't you wear gloves? Uh, I like the natural oils. <laughs> Make my hair soft so my wife tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. They really are, seriously. So. Not all scabby. And <laughs> natural lotion. <laughs> fair enough, fair yeah. enough. Uh, yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Natural lotion. Okay, so I'm going to flip it back over, but before I do, I want to just inspect the bottom end. Just good practice. Making sure the bottom of the pistons look good. Ooh, that cam is done. I can't wait to get that out and show you guys. Um, I see it, but... You're not gonna be able to see it on camera. Everything looks good. Wow, that cam is done. <laughs> All right, here we go. There's pieces of the mm -hmm. lifters coming off. Okay, so now I'm about to take off the oil pump. Now at my shop, I like going back stock. A lot of people may go in and do a DOD delete, which is fine. You know, it makes their engine last longer, but by me being a shop working for the public, I go back factory. It's just so, just liability purpose, you know? Um, and the parts that I'm gonna be using is better than factory. So it's gonna be longevity, you know, either way we look at it. And you'll get a lot of concerns about when you go back, when you're doing a DOD delete, should you change out your oil pump? This oil pump is actually better. This oil pump is actually a higher volume than a normal oil pump because of the DOD system. Let's see this right here. It's draining. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna do is work on removing my valley. Because I'm not gonna be able to pull the cam out because the high pressure fuel pump, this is a high pressure fuel pump, it runs off the cam loads, meaning the cam runs it. spring and a little plunger that if I can get it out oh it's it's the screwed in I forgot almost forgot so I'm gonna show you that in a little bit all right do we have any pry points on this not really but it pops right up no problem You have all these electronic solenoids here that control the DOD, the oil to the DOD. So it's recommended that you replace that as well. All right. So last bolt. What is that? A thirteen should be. Almost look like a lifter. See that good people? And it rolls off the cam. And this pushes up on the high pressure fuel pump. Plunges it and it pressurizes the fuel to a very high pressure. I mean, yeah, very high PSI. I think it's in the thousands, if I remember correctly. Now, I'm finally ready to remove the cam after all that. So, next thing I wanna do 
is remove my guides. They're held in like by some 10 millimeter. Uh, 10 millimeters, yep. I can tell whoever had this engine before him didn't really change their oil like that. It's all this black smudgy stuff. That's just lack of changing oil. Cause I don't think this engine have high miles like that. Uh, if I can, if I remember correctly, I can't turn it on now because the everything is disconnected, and you don't want to do that. Yes. Oh, it is the bomb. <laughs> so, pull everything off as an assembly. All right. Now, I need some T30s, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly. So, I think that's the only thing I didn't come prepared for was racks today and T30. My T30. <laughs> so, getting better and better. Yeah, I'm getting better and better. I'm gonna go grab that. I have it on. All right, it's actually a T40. Sorry guys, I was wrong. Um, I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can find some nice T dry sockets like these. So I'm gonna bust this loose. Should be nice and easy. So this is the cam retainer plate. Very important. Now you can kind of see why it's so important when you're going back together with everything as you know, everything be torqued down and properly cleaned and everything like that. Oh, now what I'm gonna do is shove my cam bolt back in there. And slowly pull it out. Now dealing with cams, you have to very gently pull them out. You have to kind of pull it out straight. You never want to snatch or force this stuff. Because what's going on, as you can see, it's coming out like it's no space. I have to, every time I pull out, I have to line that back up. So here's the cam. <clears throat> so you have so many lobes here. Some of these lobes are for, if I look at them, I'll be able to tell you, but let's just imagine for a second. Um, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, and so on and so forth. So this is the messed up lobe right here. Look how chewed up that is. It is bad. Can you catch that on camera? Mm -hmm. Get a side profile. Yeah, it's got a big deep groove in it. <laughs> it's not supposed to look like that? Nope. It's supposed to look nice and smooth like the rest of them. So, so let me see, can I tell when the bad one, where the bad one is again? I, Cause I don't know what I'm looking at. I gotcha. Uh, you can feel it too. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, See I feel that. Up it is. Oh yeah, that's rough. And if you feel another one, it's like baby bottom smooth. Oh, well, okay. Well, that's not a cam lobe. This is okay. This one. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I feel the difference. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. I'd be like, huh? <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I guess. <laughs> All right. That's so. why you do this and I do this. So I'm gonna check my my cam bearings. But these are bearings right here. You just want to give it a good little look. Everything looks good. Wonderful. Okay. Quick side note for you guys who are thinking about deleting the DOD uh, portion of this engine. Make sure when you get your kit, it should come in a kit. It should come with some plugs. Make sure you plug these off. Guys, if you like, 
Um, if you like this video, hopefully you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button because I will be doing a part two to this video showing you it running. I know I kind of left you guys hanging on the last video. Sorry about that. Um, I will make it did, sure. It did turn out good. That, yes, that it, customer is long gone and happy. So. It, yeah, it's still out running. Alex the Car Doctor out. See you guys on the next video.